use the fun menu to select Sony's five familiar focus modes. Single, auto, which switches to continuous with movement, continuous, dynamic manual, which allows manual adjustment after auto, and full manual. The simplest focus solution is to touch the object you want in focus on the LCD. And as we activate it tracking, this simultaneously starts following the object. There's no viewfinder equivalent for this. And there's face eye detect, which once you've assigned AF on to the lens is a revelation. Suddenly, every person is focused in an instant. If you take photos of people, this is a must have feature. It works in video too, as long as you don't have an external monitor connected. Now there are several face detect options. Animals can be selected. That also works well, so that the eyes instead of the nose are in focus. By default, for humans, eye auto, but right or left eye can be selected. There are multiple focus area selections. Wide area focus covers the whole screen. You get a sense of how precise, accurate, and quick focus can be. Zone can be moved with the cursor or touch on the LCD and the viewfinder. Center cannot be moved. Movable spot, large, medium, and small can. Again, either with touch or using the cursor. Small also demonstrates how much of the scene is covered. Then expand flexible spot, only one size. It increases to find subjects slightly outside the area. And tracking, which also allows select of all the sizes, including center. Tracking can also be assigned to a function button to activate it from any area selection. Use focus area limit to reduce the number of area selections. And for back focus, turn off AF with shutter and assign AF on, the likely button is the center of the focus selector. For manual focus, there is an expanded mode which activates automatically when the focus ring is turned. Except in video, where you'll need to assign it to a function button. Or use peaking, three levels, four colors. In video, there are options to control the autofocus speed and sensitivity. For continuous shooting, I use the default shutter with electronic front, reverted to JPEG Extra Fine, formatted an SDHCV90 card, and set exposure, focus, and white balance to manual. The drive menu offers low, medium, high, and high plus. A high plus is faster, but with a slower display refresh. You'll see. The current mode displays top left. While shooting, the remaining image decreases. Using high, it shoots at 8 frames per second for 16 seconds before it slows to about 4 per second. After shooting, the top left displays the number of images left to write to the card. About 30 seconds to write 80 plus images to this card. High plus snaps 11 per second, fills the buffer in 10 seconds, again slowing to about 4. While the buffer is writing, the menu can be used, but the drive mode can't be changed. Now, let's combine burst with tracking. I'm using touch on the LCD to select the train as it enters the scene. Press the focus button, and focus follows nicely. Uh, one more time, this time with the high-speed burst setting. Although harder to see with the flicker, focus tracks along. And that's confirmed when we look at the images. The A6600 never loses focus. There are single shot timers for 2, 5, and 10 seconds. Another setting combines the delay with 3 or 5 images. There are continuous and single brackets for exposure. Up to 9 images with 1 stop, up to 5 images with 3 stops. There are also white balance and dynamic range brackets. And because it's not with the others, you might miss the timer for self-portraits. For a long time, time-lapse was one of Sony's now discontinued downloadable smart apps. Now the menu has an interval timer. The interval can be set from 1 to 60 seconds, up to 10,000 minus 1 images. There are options for exposure, tracking, and silent shooting. If you're creating a video, you'll have to do that in post. 
While this is a fully capable video camera that provides great results, there's essentially no change in capability from the last couple of generations in this line. The competition has been more aggressive in adding features like providing cinema aspect ratios, higher frame and data rates, or 10-bit recording. Sony used to be the leader for video, now not so much. The A6600 does have 4K at 30 and 24 frames at 100 megabits. In HD, frame rates go up to 120 at 100 megabits, 60, 30, and 24, max at 50. And using the 120 frame rate available in the silent S&Q mode provides an in-camera slow motion down to five times. Or time-lapse like 60 times fast. There's a video-specific mode position which activates audio, and switches to the 16x9 video resolution. But video can be recorded from all of the mode dial positions with all of the creative styles and nearly all the picture effects. While other manufacturers may have a log setting for improved dynamic range for video, no one provides the depth or breadth of settings found in Sony's picture profiles. Gamma settings are just one subset, and even here, Sony provides the most comprehensive list this side of a pro camera. In addition to the four cinema gammas, there are two log profiles as well as HLG, hybrid log gamma, which provides a larger dynamic range on displays that support this feature. But these settings require some understanding and evaluation before you use them. They are not a magic bullet to improve your videos, and let me demonstrate. Using the histogram, I've properly exposed this chart, which, as most reflective illuminated content, has about 8 stops of range. I'm using ISO 500, as that's the lowest setting available with S-Log2. The waveform also shows a properly exposed image across the whole 0 to 100 range. Switching to S-Log2 compresses the range to under 60, which provides more range for the bright light in exterior sunlit scenes. Now, the recording looks somewhat dull, and exposure correction in post-production can restore the full range, but I'm not sure that compressing and then restoring your image is helpful. The low 100 megabit bandwidth internal recording leaves little room for post-adjustment. Sony's support for external recorders, which record at a higher bandwidth, is a better solution if you plan to use the S-Log settings. However, the increase in dynamic range with S-Log 2 and 3 is significant. This is the DSC Lab's Xyla chart. From the left, each rectangle has one stop less light. With profiles off, you can see 8 or 9, switch to S-Log2, and then S-Log3 to reveal 12 or 13 stops, with some increase in noise in the blacks. But there is so much more. The settings here exceed my needs and yours, and can take quite a bit of discovery and trial to master for effective use. This is the scene size in stills. Switching to video changes the aspect to 16x9, but does not crop the scene in the HD modes, all of which are identified as Super 35mm. For 120 frame, there's a crop. In 4K, the 24 frame mode is the full screen. The 30 frame mode crops in. The A6600, like some other recent models, has no video record limit. Thank you. And recent models have also been free of the overheating that plagued many Sony models, particularly when shooting 4K. With the auto temp power off at high, I turned up the meteor room to about 24 Celsius, and we're starting with 122 minutes of card space and 93% battery. The temperature is making my owl a little lethargic, it's still a pleasure to see a recording past 30 minutes and then an hour. The card filled up at a, an hour and 26 minutes with no heat alert and a battery still half charged. And remember, this camera can also be powered from the USB port. By the light of a single candle, this is ISO 12800 with a 35mm f1.8 lens at 1.8. 
I've captured a custom white balance. It's under 2500 Kelvin. If a scene required a single candle, that's the setting I would use with this camera. It's pleasing and realistic scene. Now, in order to capture the screen, I'm shooting HD at 30 frames. Let's switch to 4K at 30 frames. I do find this to be cleaner. Although I've had autofocus continuous on with face detect, it's not completely reliable. It's probably me. I don't have good success with face detect. Must be the eyebrows. Uh, now, I've increased the ISO a stop to 25,600 and closed the aperture stop to f2.5. The scene has become slightly mushy and higher ISOs provide much more mush and some colorful noise in the background. Figuring out the HDMI output settings remains complex and even some of the most obvious problems remain after several generations. When an HDMI screen or recorder is connected, the display appears on both, but the menu info display only on the LCD. There is a setting to display the menu on the external screen, but then the LCD goes black. In 4K, external menu display is not an option. When you start recording 4K at 30 frames, the screen goes black, but not in 24 frames. All HD settings output 60 frame, even if you change the output to 24. Unless you set the video frame rate to 24 and switch HDMI resolution from auto to 2160 to 1080. These are solvable problems and it's time Sony addressed them. That said, between record control and an extensive set of timecode options, this is a fully capable system. However, the competition provides a higher bit depth and better color sob sampling. Not sure why video upgrades were neglected for this and other recent Sony models. In playback, DISP cycles through the screens of EXIF data. Sony does not provide options to modify the image or export JPEG from RAW files. In many ways, Sony offers a compelling and industry-leading feature set. No one beats the battery life, the autofocus, or the range of adjustments available with picture profiles. And throughout the 36 screen menu, you'll find unique capabilities and features offering more customization and functionality than any other manufacturer. Now, I'm not the only commentator to ask for some user experience or usability work on this menu. I appreciate the capabilities, but many things are not where they should be. One example, the setting to change the shutter button to start video recording isn't with the other button settings. And then the video sections continue with more stills options. The saving grace here is the ability to create a custom menu so you can organize the settings you need in the order you want. There's help available, but it's basic. Some dimmed out selections provide helpful information, others not so much. This error message actually means audio level can only be set in video mode. So why is audio recording not also dimmed out? And now that they've figured out how to make the text scroll like face priority in multimetering, why are there still so many strange abbreviations like DispCont AF area? Don't get me started. There are a few minor enhancements from other recent Sony models missing here, like an improved naming for video files or changing the color of the focus spot. Sony has let the competition jump ahead in some areas, particularly video, which, although it is capable and high quality, has been surpassed by others. I have no hesitation recommending the A6600 for stills, particularly with a lens that supports a focus button. Magic. Always remember to keep shooting until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. Then, if you have questions or comments, I enjoy interacting with you, so post your relevant questions and civil comments below. My channel is not sponsored. I'm not paid or compensated by any camera manufacturer, and although they did lend me this camera, Sony did not read the script or review the video before posting. I do have a big thanks to all my current subscribers. It's great to have your interest and support. And for those who are considering subscribing, it would give me great pleasure 
to have you join us.